If you are a DIYer, you're gonna love the clubs that I've got in my bag today. It's probably, mm, it's gotta be up there with one of the most requested golf club reviews of the year. These are the KE4 Max from Malt B. This is a set of clubs that you can buy for under $50 a club. This entire set, four through gap wedge, all eight clubs, is $309 at Golfworks. And I love to find a good value. If you do too, by the way, hit subscribe. And these are the type of clubs that if you're a tinkerer, you will love because there's so many customizability options. People build these clubs from scratch. I got this set on loan from a fan of this show and a really good guy named Stuart Marler. And Stu is super passionate about his Malt B clubs. This is the set he actually built for his father. So I'm honored to be able to try these out here today. We're gonna play nine holes with these guys and I'm gonna walk you through everything I see. The over under that I'm gonna set for myself to really decide if these clubs are good performers is going to be plus two. If I can go plus two or better, that will be a huge win. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna score these clubs on our new grading criteria, which includes distance, forgiveness, workability, aesthetics, and of course, value. All right, let's take a look here. This is the six iron, really big cavity back there. You've got a thicker top line and you've got some offset. I wouldn't say that's a crazy amount of offset, but there's definitely a fair amount of offset with these clubs. Looking down at the sole, it's actually a very wide sole that looks thinner because of this line here. So it's actually a pretty wide, forgiving, bounce-filled sole that aesthetically, it actually looks like more of a player's iron. It's just kind of a optical illusion that they've built into this club. As you can see, there is a weight here down by the toe. Now that's adjustable. And a lot of times people also put tip weights into these to change the swing weight. So again, a lot of adjustability and customizability built into these clubs. Stewart himself has changed the loft on one of these clubs, the four iron, which we'll talk about later in the round. But what's nice is you can order these things with a number of different lengths, a number of different loft options. You can really customize these to your heart's content. And if you've got the tools and a little bit of patience, you can actually build these for yourself. And that's why these clubs have such a cult following. Now, in terms of a shaft here, Golfworks offers a graphite shaft as their stock shaft. It is called the MPF Pro Series. This is a regular. Now, I'm normally a stiff flex player, but Stuart assures me that these generally play a little stiffer than they say on the package. He's got big, thick jumbo grips on here, Golf Pride grips, thicker than I normally play, but that should be nice. So these definitely are going to be more on the game improvement side. Let's put them to the test down here for nine holes. Again, that over under plus or minus two. Let's get to work. All right, it wasn't the best drive of my life, but we are in the middle. We should have a gap wedge in our hands here. It's gonna be our first taste here of the KE4 Max. We've got 103, pin is tucked extreme right side of the screen. Gotta carry the water. Gap wedge in hand here. Is it enough? We hit the green, I may have run over. The launch there is a little on the low side. Really good result, better than I thought. Here is my pitch mark here. So we actually landed just in front and we roll down about uh, 12, 15 feet here. Well, can't complain with the tap in par, especially since that strike wasn't the best. We're heading to a kind of longer par four here, 390-ish. It's gonna take a good drive and a good second shot. All right, not sure if you can see the pin, but it's right over the crest of this hill. We've got 130. Again, wind behind us, probably playing about 125. I'm gonna use the pitching wedge here. We are in the rough. The lie isn't too bad. Now, the one thing with a club like this that has a very big profile, sometimes it hurts getting through the rough. Is it gonna be enough? It was way up in the air. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but that's, I hit it off the toe there. That's where I hit it. A little low and off the toe, but pretty forgiving result there, honestly. Now, I would say these KE4s don't have the softest feel coming off the club face. Now that I've taken a couple shots with it down here, they're a little firmer and more thuddy than a lot of the irons that are out there right now. And a couple times there, I actually thought I came up short based on the sound and the feel hitting the club face, but two for two, we're actually past the pin here. And again, we've got a nice little birdie putt on what was a pretty tough hole. 
Now, I did want to play a fade there, and that ball did fade pretty well with a pitching wedge. So, so far, so good with these things. Now, this one actually checked up quite a bit more than the first one because I hit it up a little higher in the air, and even off the toe, that did pretty well in terms of spin. I don't think these are the spinniest of clubs I've played, but not too shabby there. Six feet, we'll call it. Did I hit it? I don't think I hit it enough, did I? Is it gonna get there? Oh, <laughs> speed was actually perfect, and I thought that was gonna drop, but uh, we'll take a par there, and we're off to a decent start here. So I'm giving myself some opportunities here, and eventually we will cash in. Maybe this is the hole, this is a par three. 155 is the number, and I'm gonna go eight iron here, see if we have the distance with this club. These clubs sit right in the middle. They're not super strong. They're not weak lofted by any means. 30 degrees at the seven iron, 20 degrees at the four iron, although this four iron's a little different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, that sounded really good. When I hit that in the middle, it felt a lot better. And that ball is on the green and it's, hit a fair ways. I'd say we hit that 165. Let's go find it. So for the first time in this round, I hit it in the middle of the club face and that felt significantly better. It's still quite a bit firmer feeling than a blade and even a little bit firmer feeling than most of the players irons and even some of these game improvement irons that I've played like the Dyna Powers from Wilson Staff. These I'd say are firmer than that, but I am still getting feedback and I know where I'm hitting it on the club face and the distance, the distance is definitely there. We've got our third birdie putt of the day. Again, looking real good there with an eight iron when it was struck in the middle. It rolled out three feet. Here's my pitch mark. And decent stopping power there. Even though the trajectory on these, like I said on the first hole, is a little bit lower than what I would have expected. All right, this is a longer birdie putt here. We got about 20 feet, 22 maybe. reach. Oh. <laughs> it's just not meant to be right now, but like I said, eventually they're going to start dropping. And uh, I will not argue with tap in pars. So we're even par. We're heading to four. Before I tee off here, let me just ask you a question. Have you ever considered customizing your golf clubs or do you just buy them off the rack? I've actually built my own set in the past. You may have seen the video where I Got a set of Tacoma 101 heads. And I actually sourced the rest of the components, the grips, the shafts, the ferrules, and things like that. Most of it from Golf Works. But uh, it can be a lot of fun, and you get to have them exactly like you want them. So have you ever done it? I'd love to know, and let me know your setup down in the comments. All right, we're coming up to the hole here. Little dog leg right, second shot will be over the water. Pretty wide for giving fairway here. Might be the right time to pull out the driving iron. And this is one of those customizations that Stuart made for his father. He actually took the four iron, which is normally 20 degrees, and he had Golf Works set it to 18 degrees. He pressed it forward two degrees, and he's created a nice little driving iron for himself. This is probably the last hole I'll have a little wind behind me, so I better use it to my advantage. And let's see how this thing works. Here it is, here's our four iron. Again, nice, forgiving top end. You're gonna see a good amount of that cavity at address. Oof, great ball flight there. And that's gonna chase. I'll tell you what, again, it's tough to really feel them coming off the club face, but in terms of the actual results, I gotta like what I'm seeing here. A driving iron's a nice weapon to have. Generally, I like those to be like a three iron or a two iron, and that's exactly what Stewart did there by bending his club two degrees. So it's really nice to be able to customize your clubs, have them exactly the way you want them. You can build any set you want. The possibilities are endless. Man, this is a really good shot in the middle of the fairway. I don't think I'm gonna argue with this distance either. Again, a little wind behind me, kind of a crosswind, but 214, that's real nice. 137 to the pin. Man, I think I can get there with the pitching wedge. It's a back pin, so I'd rather be a little short than long, to be quite honest with you. Even if I only hit this 130, I won't mind. But with this wind behind us, I might have a chance. It's leaking on me just a little bit. 
oh, it hit the green, but it bounced off towards the back. Again, real low trajectory with these clubs, and part of that is probably the shaft. Now, I'd normally use the 58 degree wedge here, but I'm gonna go gap wedge just to get as much as we can out of these clubs while we're playing them. Saddle, okay. What the heck, you use it to putt with too. All right, that's four pars in a row. We're on the par train. Let's get on the birdie train though. We're heading to a par five. Wind is definitely gonna turn on us because we are turning on the course. It's gonna be more of a side wind. And uh, then it's gonna get a whole lot harder from there on out. We will be dead into the wind the rest of the round. So we gotta make the birdies when we can make them. This is the time. All right, we found the bunker on this drive and um, I've got to get it up in the air kind of quick. So best I think I can do here is the six iron and uh, we're just gonna advance the ball and get us into position, hopefully for another wedge shot and a birdie opportunity. It's heading a little left, but uh, we'll have a wedge in our hand. Hit that well. All right, I think I got a little unlucky here. I'm in the hard pan that really rolled out quite a bit. I've got 71 yards and again trying to get as much as I can out of these clubs so I am going to go gap wedge although normally what the heck is that? <laughs> normally I would hit a 58 here but I'm going to choke down on this 48 degree gap wedge. That's pretty good. Stopped real well there. Again we're going to have a birdie putt. I've actually been able to control the distances a lot better than I would think for these game improvement clubs. And uh, man, we are getting birdie putt after birdie putt. This is four greens out of five in regulation, and three of these have been really good opportunities. So one of them is gonna go in. Like I said, this would be a really good time for it. Here's the pitch mark for that shot. Off the hard pan, you'd think that that would have some pretty good grab, and it did, only rolled out a foot and a half. So spin good it's not exceptional i don't think but it's it's good it's passable come on we need it yeah! <laughs> i thought that was in it was turning in the hole and on the last roll it went right mm, that's a putt i'd love to have back but as it stands, we're still even par, so we're still in real good shape for our over-under. But like I said, it's gonna get harder here these last four holes. Perfect spot, I've got 129 in now. With this wind into our face, this is where the lower trajectory is actually gonna help us. All right, so that wind's pretty stiff. I think I'm gonna go nine iron, pins in the back, but uh, let's keep it low. And this shot's gonna favor my draw. If I can work this in a little right to left and low would be nice. Don't wanna be in that front bunker. It's definitely low. Carried the bunker. Oh! <laughs> That looks tight. That looks very tight. Now I hit it thin and it came off even lower than I thought. But man, what a result. Oh yeah. I was hoping it was even a little closer, but this is only four feet for birdie here. Best crack of the day on a swing that again was maybe my worst of the day. Yes, sir. I told you it was coming. We are one under and we are in great shape for the over under. In terms of forgiveness, I cannot argue with the results that I'm seeing. Again, I'd say these lack a little feel, but results wise, we're now five out of six greens in regulation. We've had four really good chances at birdie and we just knocked one in. And I don't think I'm swinging my best. Head into a par three, then we've got a par five and four to end it. Three tough holes, especially into the wind. See if we can end strong. It's 150, I'm gonna go seven iron. I'm also gonna try to work this ball a little left to right because that is the shot where this pin is tucked on the right side. A Lot more green to work with on the left, so we're trying to bring it in left to right. If I do too much though, we are gonna be in that right bunker. That's what we don't want. 
And yes, I overcut it considerably. The wind also grabbed it. And maybe the luckiest result of them all, we're not in the bunker, we're actually over the bunker and maybe even a little right of the bunker. So probably my worst swing of the day there, but we can get up and down here. Pretty pin high. So distance wise, I'm getting what I expect out of these clubs and maybe even a little bit more from time to time. I've got the 50 in my hand again, touchy chip here. We are short-sided, so not a lot of green. I hit my spot where I wanted to land it in that. That was better than hoped for. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I didn't take my time. I didn't take my time. That should have been par. We're still even par, but that did hurt. One of the worst things you can do in golf is linger over mistakes. All right, so I'm gonna put that one out of my head and we're gonna get back to playing good golf. Can't them all well. There's always gonna be a shot or two every round that you're gonna have to mentally get over or it can cripple you. That's the shot I needed to come back with there. I feel like you can always rely on that PXG to get me in the middle of the fairway when I need it. We've got the four iron in hand. This is the driving iron at 18 degrees. We're gonna advance the ball and get us into position here. We've got 139 here. My lie is not good. Anything could happen out of this lie. I could have a flyer lie. I could snag the club. I'm just gonna kind of hit it and pray here with this eight iron. One thing I know I'm gonna do is keep it right at target. Woo! It's blowing. There's a big bunker on the left and short that I do not want to be in. So we've got to keep it low and to the right. And I think I'm going to switch to a seven after that gust. And I kept it right all right. <laughs> oh, hold on. 58 degree wedge. Going to try to kind of flop one here. Again, we got a reasonable chance at par again. I pulled it, oh man. But we've still got a one shot cushion here. Last chance for glory here. We've got 117. Wind is really picked up here on this hole. I'm gonna go pitching wedge, I hope I can get there. Don't wanna be short though, because there's a big shelf and uh, makes par a lot harder. Let's see, I'm going right at this. I'm getting aggressive because I'd love to go even par with these clubs. Good strike, I think. It's a little left of the hole, but it should be about pin high. Now that I've seen nine holes with these irons, it's time to rank them here. And in terms of value, I think you know, this is a five out of five for under $50 per club, it does not get much better than that. In terms of distance, I'm gonna give these a three out of five. Now there were very windy conditions here today, no doubt, but from what I saw, not only out here, but inside my simulator, I think it's very good distance. It's not gonna blow you out of the water and it's definitely not going to be lacking. It's somewhere right there in the middle, so three out of five. In terms of workability for a game improvement club, a much thicker profile, I'm gonna actually give these a four out of five. They're pretty workable, much more workable than a lot of other irons in this category. Next category here is aesthetics. I'm gonna give it a two out of five. These probably aren't gonna be the best looking clubs you see all year. And in terms of sound, they're good, but they're not great. So aesthetics and feel are the two places these clubs are lacking. Now, the flip side is that on forgiveness, these are gonna get a five out of five. Some of my worst shots today ended up being really good in some of my best results. Overall, I think these clubs are a buy if you are looking to really get something custom, something that is special and unique to you, something that you can set up. And if you want to save some money, man, it's tough to beat the value of these KE4 Max is really good. So overall, really solid from the KE4. I've really enjoyed them. Overall, I guess I'll give them a four out of five. Really enjoyable set to play with. And again, the value is there and the forgiveness is there. Two highlights of these clubs. We got one more putt that I'd love to make and go even par here. Wish me luck. 20 feet, I'd say. I'm calling this 20 feet uphill. 
a little right to left. <sighs> well, one over par ain't bad, guys. And like a lot of holes today, we've got a tap in par. I enjoy these clubs a bunch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.